about to meet seven young interns who thought they were prepared for anything. They were wrong. You are cordially invited to attend a reception honoring General Hospital's incoming interns. Your friends picked her up. You let my daughter leave with people you didn't even see? <laughs> Where is everyone? The door won't open, guys. Hey, it's dead. This is done on purpose. Are you saying that someone set all this up? You're not gonna get away with this! Give me back my daughter! There are a bunch of people on the sixth floor and it sounds like one of them's got a gun. We're gonna get your friend out of that elevator. How many hostages? What condition are the hostages in? What kind of weapons does this guy have? You can't kill us. We need to get the situation under control. Lucy! I've gotta find Lucy. Do you have any idea where she could be? Oh. And now, the premiere of Port Charles. Time to go home. Billy. Oh, hi. <laughs> hi. Anything I should know about here? Come on. This is General Hospital. What's going to happen here? Shirley told me that I could just come right on back, and I didn't mean to knock so loud, but I was a little bit excited, and I thought maybe you'd be here. And... Lucy. It's positive. Positive? Mm -hmm. That would mean that I am? It means you are. Oh, oh, oh. oh my goodness! Oh, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy! I got a lot of stuff to do, don't I? Lots. I got to get pamphlets. Lots and lots of pamphlets. Every pamphlet known to man is what I need right now, and oh, look at this thing. That pretty pamphlet it says prenatal care. <gasps> music, like like playing music for a baby. That's what it means, right? Prenatal care. <gasps> I am. I am. Oh, oh what do I need? I, I need milk, don't I? I can stop at the store on the way home and pick up some milk. And I need baby name book. A baby? A baby name book. Oh, golly, and dog. I have to tell Kevin. My Kevin. Ah, I gotta go tell him. Okay, Kevin, here I come. Kevin, 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 Kevin. You know, everything I was afraid would happen has happened. And it's... It's fine. Actually, it's more than fine. I, I'm glad it's all out. I'm glad there are no more secrets. Keeping secrets can be very hard work. Tell me about it. Now I feel I have all this energy and I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> really? What do you mean? Well, before, I used to put everything into my practice. And then my practice went away. So for the first time in my adult life, tomorrow isn't a list of appointments. You know, when I was growing up, I never even considered the possibility of being happy. <laughs> so, tomorrow, I guess I'll see what Lucy has to say. And the day after that, I'll see what Lucy has to say. And the day after that... <laughs> and you thought you didn't know what would happen tomorrow. Kevin... Is something else going on here? More than anything, Lucy wanted that visit with Serena. And Scott won't hear of it because of me. Well, I understand why you had so much trouble discussing this. Look, Lucy did not get that visit with Serena because of my son. Oh, sometimes I could just strangle Scotty. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? That's 
for kids whose parents work till six. Us furniture builders, we make our own hours. You have to take Mrs. Bell's table. I don't like going that far in the truck. It's boring. Come on, I can reschedule Mrs. Bellows. But she wants that table before tomorrow morning. That's when her son's coming from Pittsburgh with his trashy wife. Hey, 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 <laughs> Serena, come on. I didn't say it, she did. We could get pizza, pizza, pizza. Daddy. What? You have to remember, no matter how long we're apart, at the end of every day, we'll still say goodnight to Mommy Star and do the secret handshake. Just like always. That's not fair. What? Telling me what I told you on your first day of school. Mrs. Bouch really wants that tape. Anybody ever tell you you're a little bit of a nag, huh? A little naggy, 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 naggy. <laughs> but I love you, though. Love you, too. Okay, come on. Dr. Ramsey? Mm-hmm? I need to be examined again. <laughs> Baby, I can't. Well, no, I mean, I, I can. Oh, well, I'd love to. What? Duty calls. Oh. <clears throat> Dr. Christopher Ramsey, you are cordially invited to attend a reception honoring General Hospital's incoming interns. Please join my husband and me for cocktails at 7 on June 1st. The reception will take place in the hospital's east wing on the 6th floor and will also be the unveiling of the newly renovated nurses station. Monica Quartermain. Mm. Oh, well, what the hell. Maybe there'll be some free booze. <laughs> what do you care about free booze? You're loaded. Just another reason to love me. Yeah, this is Stan. Uh, looks like we've got a security cam out on 6 East. Nah, it'll go till tomorrow. Floor's empty. Yeah, all blocked off. Nothing's up there. I got my pager in case you need me. Well, your days as a lowly EMT are over, Dr. Scanlon. As of tonight, you... Are you going like that? What do you mean, like that? Nothing. Falk will probably blow a gasket, but who cares? Wait a second, what about Falk? He's chief resident, and he's the kind of guy who likes prickly little rules. But don't, don't worry about it. They probably won't make a big Fred, deal out of it. what are you talking party. about? Well, it's the jeans and no tie, that's all. So what about him? Nothing. I mean, who cares about a stupid rule, anyway? Like what rule? Some crazy thing about interns and residents having to wear proper attire. What? While on duty and at hospital functions. Are you kidding me? Hey, you can just tell Dr. Quartermain you didn't know. Wait a second, if they think they can tell me how to dress... Joe. No, I mean it. There's no way I'm going to follow some ridiculous dress code. It's got nothing to do with medicine. And if that's what Falk thinks his job There's is... There's no dress code. You... You're gonna pay for that one. Oh, shoot, I ain't gonna finish the puzzle. The seven letter word for older brother A S. Yeah, I, I heard that. I hope the quarter mains are popping for open bar. Dr. Devlin. Dr. Julie Devlin. Not so loud, okay? You are Dr. Devlin. 
Julie, okay? Well, I'm supposed to take you to the reception, the one at General Hospital? I told my father I didn't want this. Yeah. You better take it. It's rush hour out. You can get me there on time. <laughs> you gotta wait for baggage? No, this is it. Then I can get you there on time. Barry, I'm gonna take you up on this. But I'm gonna have to ask you to do a few things. Sure. One, you have to keep your eyes on the road. No looking in the back seat. Two, from here on, I'm not Dr. Julie Devlin. Dr. Julie Morris. Mom, I have to go. No, I'm not going to be late. I know how much time it takes to get there, and I've got it all handled. <laughs> I love you too, Mom. But if we don't hang up, I'm going to... I know. Everything's going to be fine. Okay. Okay. I'll talk to you later. And give my love to Dad. Okay, bye. <clears throat> you talking to me? Huh? Are you talking to me? I'm out right now. I'm some stupid intern reception at the hospital. But I should be home and, uh... Listen, Danielle, I know what we decided, but I... I can't do this without you. I know you're picking up your messages. Why aren't you calling me back? Listen, you gotta call me back. You got me begging now. Please. Yes, this is Dr. Lambert in 39. Get me a taxi. I'm going to reception. I'm going... I see. I didn't realize that dialing seven numbers was beyond you. Stupid moron. Oh, stupid, stupid... You're not a serial killer or anything, are you? You have my word on it. I'm Scanlon. Joe. Get out of here. Why? You used to live over on Bain Street, right? I still do, but how do you... My know? mom was right around the corner from you, Rhonda Wexler. Karen? Yeah, Joe. <laughs> Hi. I can't believe it. The last time I saw you, we were playing Marco Polo under the streetlights. Oh, Marco Polo. I forgot about that. Well, I don't know why I decided I had to choose this necklace. I can't even put it on by myself. Maybe because it looks so beautiful. Hey, do you guys know where the east wing is? Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
it was been really great seeing you. I have to get going. I have a reception I have to get to, and I'm running. I'm in. going to the same reception. This is amazing. Yeah, it's a small world. So when did you get picked for the program? Doesn't matter. No, I just uh, I hadn't seen your name. I would have recognized it. Oh, come on, you didn't recognize my face until I had to remind you. <laughs> we better get going. We're running so oh, late. I cannot wait. A bunch of doctors drinking jug wine and talking to shop. Let's hurry. I don't want you to be angry at Scott on my account. Oh, I'm not as angry as I am frustrated. I mean, if anyone should avoid the high moral ground, it is Scott. Oh, dear. Oh, this is getting too complicated. Here I am, your analyst, and he's my son. What would you do in this situation, Dr. Collins? Not on your life. I'm out of the racket. I don't tackle problems like that anymore. Oh, lucky you. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll talk about it next time. Oh, the shrink's mantra. We'll talk about it next time. <laughs> Is that how you mark the end of a session now? <laughs> no, but it's a thought. It's a good one. I'll see you next time. Okay. Wow, well, better pay that electric bill. A baby. A little baby. My baby. Well, that would be our baby. Okay. Kevin, sit down. No, no, no. Loser, sit down because he might think something really bad's coming. Okay. Doc? You're never going to guess what happened to me. Of course, they'll guess what happened to me because he's the one who made it happen to me, but I guess all the people in the world do have little babies. But this time, it's our little baby. <sighs> I've got it. Hi. How was your day, Daddy? Whoa. Just as I was getting ready to curse the darkness. Let's get the show on the road here. Major electrical problem, folks. Now, the generator has kicked in, but something shorted the elevators, and they're out. The only way up is to use the stairs. That could take me a while. No way I'm doing six flights in these shoes. My feet are already killing me. Yeah. Oh, there's a patient elevator, right? The one that goes to the OR. That has to be on a separate circuit. You know, you may be right. Can someone press up for me? And yeah, we can press up all night. It's not going to matter. Look. I'm going to a reception, and I don't Judging want to Judging by the way most of us are dressed, I'd say we're all going to a reception. The elevators are out. Fabulous. There's one that might still be working, right? So you know what? You're right. I know where it is. So you watch a lot of MASH, huh? In case of an emergency or a malfunction, use the emergency phone located in the panel below. Panel below. Be there. Hello. Oh. Push the top. A machine? Uh, hello. This is Lucy Cohen. I can't believe I'm talking to an answering machine. I, I, I mean, I, I can believe I'm talking to an answering machine, but what I can't believe is I'm talking to an answering machine that is connected to an emergency phone in a stuck elevator. You know what I'm going to do? As soon as I get out of here, I'm going to report this to Dr. Alan Quartermain immediately because he and I go, wait, a machine. Oh, this is festive. <laughs> Don't you think it's just a bit weird to be holding this thing on a floor that's under construction? <laughs> Where is everyone? <laughs> must be taking the stairs. Well, that won't do them any good. All the other entrances are blocked off. Well, what if they gave a reception and nobody came? Oh, come on. This has <laughs> got to be a mistake. Like... Yeah, but the champagne and look at the sign. I am not staying for this. <laughs> and the door won't open, guys. It's like it's locked from the outside. That's nuts. It's a fire door. It has to open. Well, obviously, the building contractor hasn't worked out all the budget. No, I'm going to call the guard and tell him what happened. Hey, it's dead. This was done on purpose. Let me see that. Oh, get a grip, you guys. 
It's not like somebody planned for everything to screw up. I don't know. I mean, maybe somebody did. What do you mean? There's seven interns, right? I'll do a quick head count. Why are there eight of us here? Are you saying that someone set all this up? That this whole thing is some kind of a, a joke? That's exactly what I'm saying. What about these files with our names on them? What are they for? I think maybe I can shed some light on that. And believe me, it's no joke. Hey, uh, sorry I'm, I'm late. Uh, flat tire, the lug nuts were rusted. Where's Mrs. Hall? Um, Mrs. Hall went home early. She was sick. I'm substituting for her. I'm Sarah Beth Dunphy. Oh, uh, Scott Baldwin. Serena's my daughter. Oh, Serena. She is such a lovely little girl. Yes, yes, yes she is. Uh, but I was a little worried because it's, I'm late and, you know, this is her first day at this after-school thing. And uh, where, where is she? But your friends picked her up. Nobody picks up my daughter but me. I made that perfectly clear when, when she started school year. Well, Serena told me she said it would be all right with you. What, what, what people are we talking about here? Are these local people? I'm sorry, I, I... Well, what do they look like? I didn't see them. You let my daughter leave with people you didn't even see? Well, Serena told me that they were friends of yours and your wife's. I... My, 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 my wife is dead. Uh, I took over the class what, at the last minute. Okay, wait, wait, sorry, wait, wait a I second, wait a second. What, 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 did you see anything? There must be something you can remember from this. Well, uh, right after Serena left, I saw a car pull out of the parking lot. Well, how many people were in this car? Uh, two, I think. Um, and it had New York plates. At least that's what I was, think. Was one of them a woman? Um, yes. Did she have long brown hair? Um, well, let me see. I think maybe she did. Yes. I'm going to kill Lucy. I'm never going to lose you again or forget about you ever, ever again. Uh, operator, hello, hi. Uh, could you please connect me with the security desk at General Hospital? Uh, well, no, I don't have a pencil. 4859, fine, I got the number. But see, couldn't you dial it yourself? You're already on the phone, and, and this is an emergency. Well, it's actually not an emergency, but they seem to behave a lot better when you tell them that. And besides, it's very important. Security. Oh, hello. Hi. Oh, finally, a human being. Listen, um... This is Lucy Coe, and it appears I am stuck in the elevator in the east wing. I think I'm between the 8th and ninth floors. Yes, ma'am, we know all about it. I've got the maintenance and the elevator people working on it right now. Oh, then you'll have me out of here soon. Ma'am, we want to get you out. The problem is the electronic circuitry that Stop. feeds... Please, do not begin to even attempt to explain mechanical things to me. You see, when people start explaining mechanical things to me, I, I sort of drift. You know, I, I think about what I'm going to have for dinner, or maybe that wonderful vacation I want to take later, and... Even little baby names. So, please, could you just get me out of here as soon as possible? Yes, ma'am. <sighs> Hi, Doc. It's me. Um, I know you're not home, but listen, you're never going to believe where I am at this moment. Oh, that's very nice. Very macho, Dr. Scanlon. And you, Dr. Harmon, chin out so defiant in your little chair. You guys are too much. I know who you are. Yes, Dr. Ramsey? I heard a rumor going around last week that one of us was going to get bumped and replaced. It was you, wasn't it, Cooper? Just like that. I was out. And all of you were in. Three women, even a guy in a wheelchair. <laughs> Such affirmative action. I just got the news on Thursday. Which meant I had to put together this little party on a mere 48 hours notice. Turned out rather nicely, don't you think? So what the hell do you want? Don't you use that tone with me, son! It makes me impatient when people ask stupid questions. 
You want to know what I want? Hmm? I want to host a small party. Yeah. In your honor. We'll have refreshments. Maybe play a few games. And then I'll announce which one of you didn't play by the rules and took my spot. What kind of games? Oh, I know that you're hot to trot, Eve. But we haven't even had refreshments yet. Come on, doctors. We got time. Thanks to UNIVAC here, we've got all of General Hospital around us. But we're cut off from Port Charles. And the whole world. Completely. Well then, let the games begin. Oh, come on, security. This is no time for... Okay, so maybe this is an emergency. It's okay. It's okay, little baby. Everything's gonna be just fine. Mama's here. So. Are we supposed to be impressed by your cool demeanor, Dr. Ramsey? That certain je ne sais quoi. Look, Cooper. That's Dr. Cooper to you, Dr. Ramsey. Let's have a scintilla of professional courtesy around here. Was well, that what you're showing us? You crazy bastard, courtesy? Take your hands off him, Julie. Get him where I can see him. There, that's better. I was just trying to say that I think you got shafted. Dr. Cooper. Please. Dr. Gregory Maxwell Cooper IV. It's very impressive. Yeah, you got it. Very freaking impressive. Yet another brilliant Dr. Cooper. You see, Gregory Maxwell Cooper the first, second, and third, they were all doctors. And did they all start waving guns around and they didn't get what they wanted? You certainly must have made them proud. Internships at General Hospital aren't... You were just trying to make me feel better. You just said the wrong thing. I was trying to help you. I don't need your help! I had connections. My grandfather went to med school with a guy named Dr. Steve Hardy. Any of you know that name? Hmm? Well, you do, don't you, Karen? He'll take attitude off a man, but he'll shoot us. Answer him. Steve Hardy was a wonderful doctor. General Hospital was his life. That's what Granddad said. Johns Hopkins and General Hospital. Baltimore to Port Charles, the only decent way to train a physician. He never said doctor. No, 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 no. Not a lofty enough word for what we do. Anyway, it had to be that I, too, would one day be the best. Dad started grilling me in Greek and Latin almost before I could read. Would send me to bed without dinner if I couldn't conjugate a verb. That's not right. Nobody should treat a kid like that. You didn't deserve that. What I deserved was an internship at General Hospital. Without an internship at General Hospital. Whew. What are you doing, Dr. Scanlon? How can he get away with this? Throw me that phone. Did you ever see anyone die, Dr. Scanlon? Yes. When the weapon was one of these? You got away from her. Say please. Please. If any of you guys think about trying any more macho heroics, hmm? one of these very liberated women is going to turn into an illustrated lecture on the evils of firearms. So play it smart. Take a page from Dr. Harmon's book. And sit on your butts. All right, let's get on with the party.
Guess you had to miss the reception, huh? I don't have the foggiest idea what you're talking about. Hello, Audrey. Huh? Uh, Mrs. Hardy. Right. Hi. Hi. <laughs> now, I keep telling you and Joe that you don't deliver my newspaper to me anymore, so you can call me Audrey. I'll do my best, Mrs. <laughs> Audrey. How's Joe doing? Nervous about starting his internship? You won't believe him. A few minutes ago, my beeper goes off. It's him calling me from the reception. <laughs> Only my brother would page someone during the intern's cocktail party. <laughs> what intern's cocktail party? The one the quartermains are having on the sixth floor. Scanlon, there's nothing on the sixth floor. It's under construction. And if there were any reception for the interns, as chief resident, I would have been invited. Maybe. Maybe not. You know, this is obviously some intern's idea of a prank. You don't know that, Doctor. I'm going up there. Come with me, Audrey. I want to witness. Oh, all right. Fine. And we'll have to take the patient elevator. The others are still out. Oh, yes. The elevators are out? That's what I just said, isn't it? They've been out for some time. No one can figure out why. Look, why don't I go with you instead of Audrey? So you can protect your brother? My brother doesn't need my protection. I just got a feeling. Uh, Scanlon, I don't need intuitions from an EMT or advice. Just stick to your job. Doctor, shall we get this over with? Hello. Guess what? This is not funny anymore. It's cold? I'm still stuck in the elevator, and it has fallen. Oh, boy. Uh, this is a bigger problem than we thought. Stan, could you punch up the sixth floor? Ma'am, ma'am, can you tell me where you're stuck? I'm not sure. You see, I got on at the tenth floor, and I am not positive how far it could have fallen. Oh, hold on a minute. I have an idea. Hey! Is anybody out there? Look, I am stuck in an elevator, and I need to know where... That sound of that gunfire. Somebody just shot at me. Somebody shooting at me. Is she near the sixth floor? Uh, uh, she, she could be, but my sixth east monitor's been out for an hour. Call the cops. Tell them there are a bunch of people on the sixth floor, and it sounds like one of them's got a gun. Put me through to the police now. Hello? 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 Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay, baby. Listen to Mom. We gotta get us out of here, okay? It's up to mom. I'm gonna get you out of here. Ah! What if you kill somebody in that elevator? Someone had to go first. Are you a real man now, huh? Listen to me, Dr. Cooper. It's not all over for you. What are you talking about? So you lost an internship at General Hospital because of some politics. I mean, what's the big deal? We don't know if anybody was hurt in that elevator. Now, you put down that gun and you let us walk out of here. And you still have a shot at a life. Make your own dreams come true. Forget about your father's. What's he gonna do now? Climb every mountain? He's wasting his breath. He can't reason with this guy. I know what you're talking about, buddy. You know I do. You got files on all of us over there. Oh, I know all about your nasty little secrets. I started researching the competition last year. I was very thorough. Yeah, then you know about my dad, right? He's not like yours. He's just the opposite of yours. Came up from nothing. Made it the hard way. But he still wants things from me, just like your dad does. Things he could never get for himself. Polish, prestige. But the bottom line is, who cares what they want? To hell with your old man and all those other Coopers. You can walk out of here and be whatever you want to be. As long as you don't fire that gun again. You can walk out of here, Dr. Cooper. You can still have a life. Like you're all going to let that happen. You think we don't understand how you feel? We know what the pressure's like. Any one of us could have cracked. Could still crack. Nobody understands where you're coming from better than we do. Did you ever read the physician's oath? Whatsoever I shall see or hear in the course of my profession, I will never divulge. Holding such things to be holy secrets. That's what this night will be, Cooper. A holy secret. Just among the eight of us. What do you say, Dr. Cooper? Why don't you give me that gun?
I hope you... Do you see, Dr. Ramsey? Just like Daddy said, there are no second chances! Why are you staring at me like that? I know what you're going through. Come along. Don't be afraid. Come on. It's all right. It's all right. Where do you think you're going, Mrs. Hardy? You're taking these people out of here. Come on. Come on. No! You should have done that to me. You should have done that to me. Mrs. Hardy, can you hear me? Lucy! Hello? Oh, hello, Kevin. It's Gail. Uh, I'm just so glad you got home. Why? Did something happen? Yes, something terrible. There's a hostage situation right here in the hospital. Are you all right? Yes. I mean, luckily, I was on my way out, so I just wanted to make sure you weren't still here. Are, are there any patients in danger? Oh, well, nobody seems to know. I mean, apparently... The, this person is holding people up on 6 East, and, well, there aren't any patients Dr. Baldwin, there. Dr. Baldwin, you have to move on. The police are evacuating the hospital. All right, all right. Kevin, I've got to go. Uh, you take care. Gail. Lucy, is it over? You're not gonna get away with this! Collins! Collins! That was a very stupid move! <laughs> Audrey! It's Joe Scanlon. Talk to me. Talk to me. Oh, Joey! It's okay, Audrey. It's alright. It's gonna be okay. Joey! Oh, well, we know how you made the cut, uh, Dr. Scanlon. How did you manage to get Steve Lucy, shut up, you stupid moron! This woman is seriously injured and that man is bleeding to death! It's okay. Dr. Ramsey, just check him out. What are you looking for? Gloves. They're no real men to the gloves. Look, there's a lot of blood on him. So? I heard Fox gay. Oh, oh yeah, that's fine. Audrey Hardy saved your life. Now you're Joan of Arc. He's dead. Killed him. That was not my responsibility. Folk came charging in here, ready to throw his weight around. Oh God, nothing's ever his fault. That's how he sees it. Yeah, well, then somebody's got to make him see things a little bit different. Audrey, can you hear me? Uh, yes. Hey. Folk's dead. Yeah. Oh, this is not a game anymore. You have killed a man, and this woman is in serious condition. Your little plan is all screwed up. You shut up, bitch. My plan is fine. I am in control of this whole hospital. So much for Mr. Generator. God. There. That's more like it. I did not need that. I didn't need this. I really... Okay, I've had it. This is it. This is where Mom draws a line in the sand. We are out of here. Okay. Think. Think, think, think. So the purse. No, not the purse. My umbrella. Where's my lip toy? Andy, Andy. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. No, 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 no. It's bad luck to open an umbrella inside. Oh, it can't get any worse than this.
The police are on the scene. I'm sure they'll have the situation in hand real soon. Lucy Coe, have you gotten her off the elevator? We're doing the best we can, but there seems to be a hostage situation. I know. It's on the sixth floor. Lucy could be stuck right next to it. Now, what are you doing to get her out? Whoever this nut is, he's fired into the elevator once already. He's shooting at her? Whenever he hears a noise from the elevator shaft. The police are trying to think of her safety, Dr. Collins. All right, where's Max Scorpio? Uh, he's on his way. Did you tell him it was Lucy Coe in the elevator? No. This is a bad situation. The person with the gun is some kind of computer genius, too. What does that mean? It means they figured out how to knock out our main circuit breaker station and the generator. We're on minimal power here. Well, that could affect the elevator. It's already dropped twice. I can't make any guarantees. We can bypass the computer. We can operate the elevator manually. Security. Yes, we're doing everything we can. Yeah, I can see that. Hey! Uh, yes, 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 sir, yes, sir. The patients are our main priority. We're moving them to another location right now. Well, because there's some lunatic up there with a gun. A gun? Oh, that's terrible. We're doing everything we can. Oh, well, thank you, sir. You've put my mind at ease. Security says there seems to be a lunatic with a gun. Security knows that? That means the police know. Doesn't matter. There's nothing that they can do. If that pompous jerk hadn't walked in, we'd be out of here by now. Audrey! Audrey! Oh, God. She's lost consciousness. Audrey! You followed the flight plan. Yeah, man. You're all clear to Port Charles. Hey, where's your co-pilot? Doesn't Serena usually go with you? Not this time. That's never gonna happen again. Now, look. You know the arrangement. Nobody knows where I am. Maybe she's still semi-conscious. See if she can follow any verbal commands. Audrey, listen to me. Audrey, can you squeeze my hand? No response. This is more than just a concussion. Could be an epidural hematoma as hard as he hit her. Can't even check our pupil at response. I don't have the light. Oh, here. I have a pocket flashlight. It's better than mine. Pupils are uneven. <laughs> this is bad. You know, she could be brain dead or brain damaged if something isn't done. What are you going to do? Just stand here and watch while she dies? Look, you wanted to humiliate the person who pulled the strings and got your spot. Well, it's me. Karen Wexler. Okay? I didn't figure it out until tonight, but one of my relatives arranged for me to replace you. Well, well, this party's really starting to pick up. I'm the person that you want. Let everybody else go. Let them get Audrey the help that she needs. Shh, shh. Be quiet, all right? I just have to think. Your murder thing isn't going to work. He's not going to You know, I am go. starting to get sick of you. Excuse me? You're so witty and sarcastic, and you make your shrewd observations. But you're on the sidelines where it's safe. Share your observations somebody else after this. I've got it. Audrey here is in a room full of doctors. Well, we don't have to cancel the party. This is so cool. You guys can do the surgery. Yes, you'll be heroes. Or the butchers who killed Dr. Hardy's widow. You quit jerking us around. This lady needs a CT scan. She needs an OR. And mostly, she needs a neurosurgeon. Listen, none of us have even assisted on a surgical procedure. Yeah, but you've watched a million of them, right? Mrs. Huh? Hardy needs burr holes drilled into her skull to relieve the pressure. We can't do that here. She could seize at any time. Worse yet, she could herniate. Looks like you better get to work then, huh? I want to know something. Are you enjoying this? I have to take care of her now. You heard him. He's not going to let us take her out of here. It looks like we've we got a think. couple minutes. Dr. Lambert has Cooper's attention. You're a big man now that you have your gun, right? You can threaten our lives, make jokes about a dying woman. But you know what? Someone's going to take that gun away from you eventually. And then you'll be what you were before. Scared to tell Daddy that you didn't make the grade. Oh. And what about you, Dr. Lambert? 
standing there in your designer dress. Well, maybe it's time everyone knew it was from Loman's basement and that your whole image is an act. Ooh, that hurt. Listen, we could take this guy out. What are you talking about? Cooper, he means we could kill him. Stress is getting to you, Marshak. We're supposed to go up against that cannon of his with our bare hands? These are some medical instruments. Special size, custom made, including a scalpel. All we gotta do is make his carotid artery and he has his tool. Wow. I know, I'm talking about slitting the man's throat here. Mm. I'm okay with that. I'm just wondering how we're going to get within slitting distance. Listen, there are seven of us. Okay, there's one of him. Come on, guys. You think there's any other way of us getting out here alive? <sighs> Dr. Eve Lambert. So chic, so cool. That's what you want everyone to think. Right, Evelyn? Mmm. Evelyn Ray Lambert. Ray's in honor of your papa, right? But Big Ray didn't buy into little Evelyn's act any more than I buy into yours, Eve. Which is why he split when you were three. Which is why you've been looking for daddy ever since. Boys your own age don't have a chance, do they, Evelyn? Well, now, if you're referring to yourself, I make it a policy never to sleep with men who still wet the bed. There's one other option. If Jake's got medical instruments, we might be able to do the surgery. Are you out of your mind? No. She's seizing! Hold her, hold her. Get her, hold her. Keep her next Get her arm, get her other arm, get her. Get her next straight. She's dying, Cooper! I'm not leaving this room! We have to take care of her now. I didn't want to do this. And my grandma's got some costumes in her attic. I'm sure you've tried them all on. Shut up. Right, Matt, see if you can find a half-inch bit in there. We're going to need to find a way to sterilize it. See if you can find some duct tape. Kathy, you're not really going to try that. What would you do, Ramsey, huh? Make another speech until she dies? If there's a blowtorch back there, we could rig up a way to sterilize all the instruments. Hey, look, you got to sterilize the whole room. It's too bad Dr. Falk can't enjoy this with us. He'd be so proud. All right, how are we going to prep her skull? There's a small razor in here. Tell him what you use that for, Dr. Marshak. I've got alcohol and iodine solutions, some sponges, and some plastic tape. <gasps> She's seizing again. It's going to be big, Joe. Okay, who's going to man the drill, huh? Okay. Who's going to put those okay. burr holes in Mrs. Well, Hardy's I... skull? <sighs> Me. I'll do it. All right, look, I want to know the status of the woman in the elevator. I want to know how many hostages are on the sixth floor. Get me every scrap of daddy you can on that perk. And get me Kevin Collins. What? I need to know how to talk to that maniac. Go on, move. Okay, baby. We can just find a way to climb out of here. Reach the top of this thing, maybe. We can get... You're gonna have to leave. Yeah, I know. There's a woman stuck in an elevator. We know all about that. We're gonna get to her right now. I have to ask you to leave. Well, well, what do you mean you'll get to her? I mean the police are gonna evacuate the hospital before they go after this guy. So you're gonna have to. Well, leave. what about the woman in the elevator? That thing could drop seven floors any minute. Right, have you just written her off because it's too much trouble? I don't want to argue with you about this thing. Okay. All right. There's a control panel in the elevator shaft. I know how to rewire it so the elevator will work. Now once we get Lucy out. The police can use the elevator. My orders are very specific. Yo, Vito, 
Frankie, what are you doing? I'm just here? helping out. Look, Stan needs to see you at Central Station. I got to deal with this no, guy. I'll get him out. Thanks, Frank. Frank Scanlon. Kevin Collins. I'm not going anywhere. Sure you are. You're going to show me that control panel you were telling him about, and then we're going to get your friend out of that elevator. Nice to meet you, Frank. Yeah, well, it's not just for you or the lady. The guy on the, on the sixth floor, the one with the gun, has got my brother. I, I've been trying to find the best way to get in there. Your theory about the elevator sounds like it. Let's go. How come you know this building so well? Let's just say I've stalked every corner of it. Do you hear that? This is incredible. They've got helicopters up there. Oh, my dad. It's a jump at Sir It's all set, Joe. You're not really going to do that, are you? Our vitals. Wink radio pulse at 96, respirations at 12. But you don't even have a CT scan. You said it yourself. Yeah, I remember. I'm, you'll be drilling blind, Scanlon. Are you crazy? What do you want him to do? Just let her die? Hey, she could die because of what he does. Just because the injury's on one side doesn't mean the hematoma's on that side. He's right. If that's a contra coup injury. Scanlon, if Mrs. Hardy dies because of what you did, you can kiss being a doctor goodbye. We could all be indicted. We could be rescued in the next five minutes. Yeah. Or we could be here for hours, all right? Or he could kill us all. You're going to stand around worrying about legalities while she has seizure after seizure and then dies. We can't wait any longer. The way I figure it, I need someone to assist and someone to immobilize her head. I'll do it. I just got to get out of the chair. No, you should stay in the chair. We may have to move fast at some point. You'll need to be mobile. I do it, but I've got Falk's blood on my hands. I'll be fine. I just don't think I should touch him. I'll do it. All right, thank you, Karen. Who else? Jake. Oh, no, Dr. Marshak doesn't like dealing with live specimens, do you, Jake? Anyone who assists him is as liable as he is. I'll assist. But the decision to operate wasn't mine. How come you didn't go into law? This is a side with the blown people, all right? So I'm going to make the first burr hole here. No, 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 no. I position it about a quarter inch lower. Feel for the temporal artery. I observed a lot of these in my last year of med school. Then you're the closest thing I have to an expert opinion. What about pain management? We don't have any anesthesia. I thought of that too, all right? But she's not responding to any stimulus. She hasn't had a drill in her head yet. We don't have a choice here, Ramsey. We already sponged my tongue. Okay. Especially if it's an arterial bleed. Ramsey, huh? you seem to be the people person. Do something to make yourself useful. Keep him shut up. and you know how I am when I can't talk, so please. Would you just help me and my baby, please? Lucy? Doc? Don't move. We're gonna come and get you. That would be lovely. But you're gonna have to do it very, very quietly. Dr. Collins and I are going to get over to where you are. They were going to help you over to this ladder, okay, Lucy? I, I don't know if it's okay. I don't think I'm going to be able to let go of this thing. Now, Lucy, you know I wouldn't let anything happen to you. You believe that, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, Doc, I do. But I just have a, a reason to be extra special. Careful right now. <laughs> Lucy, Lucy, look at me. Just look at me. Don't move. I'm so scared. I know, I know. All right. Lucy, give me your hand. Give I, me your hand. I, I, Look me in the eye and give me your hand. Come on. All right. Okay. Now lower yourself down. Okay. Lower yourself down. Okay. We're right here. Okay. Right here. Do you have me? Yes. Okay. okay. You got you. You see? Okay. Okay. Doc. Okay. Oh, you are. My knight. It's shining armor. You're not so bad yourself, whoever you are. <laughs> Don't mention it. Are you all right? Yeah. Okay. It's quiet again. Just drill the lady, will ya? I'm ready. Eve? Got her. Karen? Ready. I want it to be known that I had no part in this. Wait a minute. Why is somebody shooting out there? He's holding some people hostage. What? Nobody knows the details. You think you can get this elevator going again? I can do it. Once I have, and I have her in a safe place, I'll come back here and help you. What about you? Where are you going to go? How are you going to get out? Don't worry about me. You just rigged that control panel so that those doors open and you'll have done plenty. Good luck. Oh, Doc. I thought that I would never see you again. You should never think like that. Oh. Okay. 
Okay, so where is that control panel thingy you have to rig? It's a ways up there. You might want to lose those heels. No way. I am not losing these babies. They cost me 200 bucks. Lucy, it's quite a climb. Don't worry about me and my shoes. I'm fine now that you're here. All right, let's go. Okay. Wait a minute. My bag cost me 250 bucks. All right, let me have it. Oh, thanks. <gasps> Doc! Come on. Yeah, baby. Do you think birds are happy? <laughs> Do I think birds are happy? Well, I'm glad you asked that because I haven't given bird happiness enough thought. I think birds are happy. Yeah. You know when I think they're the happiest? When? When the little baby birds are flying right beside the father bird. Yeah, baby. Mommy's in heaven now, right? She sure is. Do you think she can see us better now? I, uh, I think that she uh, can see us a little bit better, yeah. But um, I got a little news flash for you. What? Your mommy can always see you, always. Daddy? Yeah, baby. If I tell you a secret, will you promise not to tell anybody? Cross your heart. Cross my heart. Sometimes she holds my hand. background music for a delicate procedure like this, hmm? I've got the perfect thing. Dr. Scanlon's statement of purpose. Listen up, everyone. Just ignore him, Joe, or we're gonna lose her. On the night of March 18th, 1989, I was awakened by the sound of my mother's weeping. A policeman had come to the house to inform her that my father had been in an automobile accident and that he was dead. Sponge. Got it. Okay, you're doing a real good job, Joe, a really good job. He's crazy to try that. Ramsey, if I'm ever lying along the side of the road bleeding to death, I hope you're not the surgeon who happens to drive by. Oh, 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 listen to this. This is the good part. Why don't you just leave the guy alone? Sponge. Oh, would you rather we talk about you, Dr. Marshak? Hmm? The heartwarming tale of the little Polish boy who got along with test tubes better than he did people? Stabilizer. She don't know anything about me. Oh, au contraire. Sponge. I know about Danielle. I think she calls herself oh, an actress. I mean, the iodine. Oh, what were you doing? Following us around? She dumped you, didn't she? Well, oh, what happened? Can you show her your little experiments? You're pushing people too far, Cooper. They're gonna start pushing back. She's not responding. We're gonna have to drill the other spot and elevate her head and shoulders. Okay. And I will never forget the sense of powerlessness I felt when I saw my father laid out in his one blue suit. In nomine patri et fili et spiritus sancti. Lock it out, Joe. Lock it out. Until Audrey is out of the woods, and then we're gonna get him.
Okay. So what do you have to do? I have to isolate the wire that connects the elevator to the central computer and disengage it. What happens if you don't pick the right wire? Well, the elevator will fall six floors with Mr. Scanlon in it. Nothing seems to be happening. Cooper, I told you to shut up! This worked, we should see some kind of change in the responses. Audrey? Audrey, can you hear me? Can you move your hand now? Audrey? Come on, Audrey. Come on. I really didn't want to be right about this. We don't need second opinions right now. Fine. Commissioner Scorpio, it's about the general hospital thing. Because I am about six feet away from it, that's why. Scanlon. Scanlon, where are you? In the elevator outside the sixth floor. Can you see what's going on? Some. What kind of weapons does this guy have? It's some kind of a semi-automatic. How many hostages? A total of eight people. Seven of them are interns, one's a nurse. There is a ninth person who's dead. It's a resident named Falk. What condition are the hostages in? Well, the interns are okay. The nurse, she seems to have some kind of a head injury. Her name's Audrey Hardy. Audrey? Hey, you better have a neurosurgeon with you when you come in. Anything else you can tell me? Well, from what I've heard, the guy is a computer whiz and an electronics expert. You know, maybe he's got a cell phone on him. His name is Cooper. Can we get someone to check it out? You know, somebody's already on it. A doctor named Colin seems to be pretty good with electronics and computers himself. His girlfriend was the one in the elevator. He got her out. All right, Kevin. Doc, how much longer do you think? I can't really tell. Are you feeling all right? Sure. Sure, why? You're not talking. I'm not? No, oh, you haven't noticed? Oh, well, I mean, I was just trying to, you know, be quiet so you could concentrate, you know, not disturb you, but, you know, I was just thinking about all the people whose lives are at stake, and I thought if we really start thinking about that, then we might get really scared, you know, and I started thinking about Mr. Scanlon's brother, and I thought, wow, that okay. could be really bad. I feel better now. <sighs> yeah, me too. that? Her pulse seems a little stronger and her respirations are getting more even. Oh, man. All right, listen, we should be seeing neuro changes by now. Got any more power tools, Scanlon? Yeah, it's a good one. I like yeah, that. Yeah, that's really funny. Must be a real good time sitting there throwing in pot shots when you didn't do anything yourself. Who is this? Mr. Cooper. Dr. Cooper. Sorry, my mistake. What do you want? My name is Max Scorpio. Oh. Hi, Commissioner. Love the helicopters. Nice touch. Glad you like them. Listen, Dr. Cooper, we need to start figuring a way to get this situation under control. It's under control. My control. For a while. But things could get a lot worse. More people could get hurt. Why do you think I'm doing this? Listen, Dr. Cooper, is there anyone else you might want to talk to? Girlfriend, your parents, maybe. So much for the cops. Listen to me, Audrey still is not responding. We have to get her out of here now. 
Okay, boys and girls. Time for that entertainment I've been promising you. A great party game. Brand new twist on an old favorite. Remember musical chairs? Every time the music stops, everybody runs for a seat. The person left standing is out. You must have been a winner every time, Harmon. Snap, we're gonna take him. We're gonna take him now. He's right. Every time you eliminate someone, you take away another chair. Here's the twist. In this game, whoever's left standing gets to join Dr. Falk in the penalty box. Get the picture? Okay. Who wants to start the music? Bond Collins, hurry. You can't kill us. I can't? Gee, they told me I could when I bought this gun. Commissioner Scorpio, it's me again. You'd better get a sniper position fast. He's talking about killing everybody. You wanted to be a doctor. You wanted to save lives. What? Oh, yeah. That's good. Oh, I love that! Honey, I didn't give a damn about my fellow man. Everyone's got their real reason why they want that black bag and the white coat and the MD license plate. Maybe they want to be able to walk through their crummy neighborhood like a big man instead of a little brother. Hmm? Or maybe they want to be the son their father liked best. Or maybe they figure if they're ever going to have a woman in their life, they better learn how to clone her. Or maybe they don't want to end up like their slutty mother. Or they look on it as a way to prove to their father that they, too, really are a man. Or maybe they want to show the whole world that they really aren't a cripple. Or maybe, in rare cases, they also look on it as a way to make people forget that what they used to be was a pill-popping stripper. Right, Karen? Right! Okay, so you're right about everything. So what's your point? All my life, I wasn't allowed to make a mistake. That wouldn't do for Dr. Cooper's boy. And now I'm out. And she's in. Dr. Gypsy Rose Wexler. As a teenager, Karen became friendly with a local hood named Sonny Corinthos. Before long, little Karen was appearing nightly in Mr. Corinthos' strip joint and was entertaining Mr. Corinthos during the off hours. Right, Karen? You became Sonny's little, little bimbo for a while there. What made you decide to turn to medicine after that, honey? Karen? Hmm? What? Maybe you figured you'd have easier access to those barbiturates you developed a taste for. That's right, doctors. Your colleague here had another little problem, too. That old diazepam had you writing its spell. Didn't it, Karen? Hmm? Huh? We all make mistakes, Cooper, and I made mine when I was 17. The one thing I'm going to regret about how tonight's going to turn out is that I never had a chance to see your act. I'll do it for you. If you want. Karen, don't. Are you crazy? I mean, I figure I owe it to you. 
after taking your internship. You know, that's true. Go ahead. Hey, I need the right music. Hey, take your pick. Takes it all off. And then you all go night night. Agent Boynton? It's Scott Baldwin. That matter I spoke to you about has been taken care of. Well, damn it, you find her. She's got my kid and I want her back. Lee. Scott. What are you doing here? Well, I'm meeting a client. What are you doing here? Listen, I, I can't talk to you right now. Oh, whoa, whoa, wait, wait. I haven't seen your face in years. You're not going anywhere. Well, what about Lucy? I'll see you tonight. Where? At your house. Serena and I are going to stay with you and Gail. Now you know how it feels. <clears throat> Look at my face. Look at how hard I have to work to keep from blowing your head off. something more important to you. Don't do it, Eve. <laughs> okay. I'm pull the wire. Pray for our new friend, Frank. Uh, You're great, Doctor. Yeah, just great. Thanks. Get up here! Come on, Nick. It's over. It's over. It's over. You got the right one. How long are you out there? Long enough to see that you're a hell of a doctor. All right, what happened? All right, a guy hit her on the side of the head with the butt of the gun. She uh, lost consciousness. She had a lot of pain. She wasn't responding at all. Pupils became uneven. She had two grand mal seizures that lasted about 30 seconds each. It's an epidural hematoma. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. The gauze is lacerations? No. A, I drilled two burr holes. Burr holes with, with, with what? That drill over there. We found a way to sterilize it. So you, you did this without a cat scan? He had to. She would have died. He tried to get Cooper to get her the proper care, but he wouldn't let him. Uh, excuse me. Get over here. We need to help Audrey, please. Yeah, All right. Be careful with her. Let's get her out of here. Come on, Cooper. Party's over. Uh, Dr. Cooper! This quick thinking man. Oh, uh, he wasn't watching me. I was the only one he didn't see as a threat. He was a fool. I'm proud of you, Joseph. 
You didn't do so bad yourself there, Francis. Hey, the cops wants to get out of here. About what I said to you before. Please. I don't want a bond. I don't think that's going to be a problem. Hi. I guess now you know how I uh, spent all those nights after we stopped playing Marco Polo. Listen to me. I just, I just came to thank you for all your support. And as far as other stuff goes, Karen, it's none of my business. No one knew. Now they all know everything. Uh, oh, nothing. Took you long enough to get out of here, huh? <laughs> hey, I was busy. <laughs> Sir, this is a crime scene. What do you think you're doing? I'm uh, just taking a last look around. You know, it's been quite a night. Talking to Tony. Audrey's being prepped for surgery. How is she? Not good. Lucy, I just found out you were in there. Oh, hi. Well, you know, Kevin did save my life. Yeah, so I heard. Are the new interns okay? Uh, I just found out they're fine. Good. We were told that one of them did it. His name's Gregory Cooper. We rescinded his internship last week. He had a history of emotional instability and his parents kept quiet for years. Have you heard about Audrey? What? what? What about Audrey? What happened? She walked in on the hostages and Cooper. He hit her over the head with the butt of his gun. She has a serious injury. She's going into OR right now. But she will come out of it all right. She'll be fine. Something should be fine. Well, if you'll excuse us, we're tired. <laughs> Call if anything happens we will. to Audrey. Okay, okay please let sure. Us know. Go on, Can go I? home. Take care. Good night. Good night. Oh, good night. Oh, boy. Excuse me. Is your name Lucy Cole? Yeah, that would happen to be me. I'm going to have to ask you to come with me. McGill, what's going on? Nobody's telling me anything, Commissioner, except that this is a federal matter. Federal matter? Th there's got to be some kind of a mistake. Listen, go home. Get some rest, all right? There's no mistake, sir. I have orders to bring her in for questioning, whether you like it or not. I can't believe it's all over. It? What are we supposed yeah. to do now? Go home and get a little hey, shot? Hey, Matt, listen, you need a ride? Uh, thanks. Yeah, that would be great. Anybody else need a ride? Julie? Karen's dropping me. Oh, anybody else? Look, I know you didn't like some of the things I said up there. Hey, the it's okay, all right? I mean, we all had a gun on us. We all did what we had to. And we made it. Yeah. You were all right? We were so worried about you. Yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> Listen, everybody, I'm Alan Quartermain. I'm the chief of staff here. This is my wife, Monica. She's a surgeon. I just want each and every one of you to know how deeply concerned we were about you. Yes, if anyone needs to talk, we're both available. If you need crisis counseling, well, I guess it's, uh, it's a little early to start talking about that. I'm supposed to tell you people that you need to report to police headquarters in the next 24 hours to give us your statements. Oh, great, as long as it's convenient for you. Just following orders, ma'am. Hey, I gotta get home. I got an important phone call. Who cares what we have to do? I mean, a man died tonight. And Mrs. Hardy almost did. That's right. And she's not out of danger yet.
Miss Coe, yeah, thank you for Doc? cooperating. Doc? She's not cooperating. And where do you get off picking up people in Port Charles without consulting me first? Commissioner Scorpio, you're a friend of Miss Coe's, aren't you? Yes, what's that matter? What is going on Ms. here, Coe, please? we're with the FBI. Listen, Miss Coe has had a very harrowing day. Well, that's what we want to talk to you about, Miss Coe. What you were doing today. Well, well, Lucy, you do not have to answer these questions. Well, I, I just think this is a really bad karma day, and so I want to get it over with. So, okay, I'll tell you. I, uh... What's the... This morning, I, I was at... My hairdresser. We'll need the exact time of your appointment when you left in the name of someone who can corroborate your statement. Why does she need corroboration? She hasn't done anything. Miss Coe? Uh, well, let's see. I was at the hairdresser at 9.30. I had a, a deep condition, and then I was finished at 11.30, and you can ask Luigi. And what's his last name? No one has last names at Luigi's. Tell us about where you went after you left Luigi's. Um... Lunch. I was just absolutely starving and, well, I went to the Outback. You know, everybody goes to the Outback and everybody knows me there. It makes sense because I used to live right above it. And so, then? Then? Uh, then I, I went for a walk um, in, in, in the woods. I, well, I, I just needed some time to think. And when did you go for this walk? Uh, ooh, that would be one-ish, 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 that's it. Did anyone see you on this walk? Squirrels. And uh, it was so lovely in the woods, you know, and... Well, and, and then I, I drove back, and I, I, I had an appointment, and um, then I left that office around 7-ish. Who is your appointment with? Um... Look, I'm sorry. I, I just can't tell you where I was this afternoon. So you're refusing to account for six hours of your afternoon. It's enough time. Enough time for what? Miss Coe, I'm placing you under arrest. What? What, what are you talking about? Oh, what? good, you found her, Boynton. What are you doing Where here? Is she? Hey, what hey, have you done with hey. my daughter? That's a tough bunch. Yeah, you didn't say anything to Joe Scanlon. Well, not in front of the others, anyway. So, you want to ride to the police station? Uh, no, I, I have my mom's car, thanks. I'll call you tomorrow? I'm not sure where I'll be tomorrow. Dr. Scanlon, can I have a word with you, please? So what's the latest word on Audrey's condition? I don't know that she's still in surgery. I understand that you uh, performed a particular procedure. In my opinion, it was a life or death situation. I understand that. I'm terribly sorry to tell you, you're going to have to go in front of the hospital review board. And until there's a ruling, you will not be able to begin your internship. All right. And if the ruling doesn't go my way? Why don't we cross that bridge when we come to it? So I may not be able to practice medicine again, right? Joe. So I may lose my career because I didn't step back and say, hey, this is against the rules. Joe, listen, hey, we have certain procedures. Yeah, and I think your procedures stink. I did exactly what you would have done, Dr. Quarterman, before CT scans came along. The procedures are there to protect the patient. No, the procedures are designed to protect you, to keep you from paying higher premiums on your malpractice insurance. Joe. Don't cross the line with me. Now, I know this may seem unfair. It's not just unfair, all right? It is wrong. What kind of doctor would I be? Hell, what kind of man would I be if I thought more about saving my professional butt than I did Audrey's life? Would I be any different than Greg Cooper? This isn't something I enjoy doing. Well, let me tell you something, Dr. Quartermain. It's going to get less enjoyable for you because I am going to fight you. I am going to be an intern at General Hospital, and I am going to practice medicine in Port Charles. See you Monday. Stay tuned for scenes from the next Port Charles. Next week on Port Charles. Danielle. I'm back. Does this mean you're still gonna leave Port Charles? Hi. Hi. Anything I can help you with? We were held hostage. We we're the victims of a crime. Patients and staff might fear that you are emotionally unstable right now. What is so fascinating about that letter? Isn't it obvious? So what was I supposed to do? Just sit and watch her die? I have had to make life and death choices many, many times. Did you ever times. make these choices when somebody was holding a gun on you? Where is she? Where's my daughter? I do not have her. You kidnapped her. I do not have her. Give me back my daughter!